I don't know if I'm streaming or not yet. It's got a yellow dot. I think I'm streaming now. <laughs> All right. How's it going, everybody? Um, actually, how's it going, nobody? Because this started 11 seconds ago and nobody's watching yet. So currently, I'm not talking to anybody unless you're watching this later. Um, so uh, today, I'm going to repeat this because there's nobody on yet. But I am going to just show you how I'm mastering um, the Reawaken M Studio album in Logic Pro. And if you want to say anything in the chat, hey, hi, music maestro. How's it going? Cool, 30 seconds in and I'm not talking to myself anymore. That's the record. Usually it takes people a long time to find that this is live. So thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, today I'm just going to go over just some mastering in Logic Pro. Um, I'm currently mastering the Reawaken Hymns studio album, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going to make my face bigger. Let's see. Is that better? There we go until I actually get into logic. So there's two reasons I'm doing this stream today. Um, one is I just need to test out my new streaming setup. So my old computer couldn't handle streaming because it was kind of slow. Um, and so I need to, I got a new computer recently so I could work on because video editing and music editing and streaming all take a lot of resources and my old, old computer just wasn't cutting it. So I got this new one and I was gonna try out streaming because that's one of the hardest things for a computer to do, especially while I'm running a program like Logic or Final Cut or something. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, so we're gonna try that out, and the other is just to show you guys mastering, and you can I've been mastering this album forever now, so I figure you could join me while I do a little bit, and I could show you what I do with that. So, oh, sorry if I keep knocking the, that's my bad, I keep knocking the desk where the microphone is. All right, let's get into it. So, stream seems to be working well. Computer's handling it, so that's good for the test. Awesome. Uh, if you're just joining us again, talk to me in the chat. Talk about whatever. We're just hanging out while I test this live stream and show you what I've been mastering and whatnot. Um, all right, let's start from... I'll open one of my projects, one of the songs, like the actual song file, not the mastering file. Uh, what should we go with? Let's go with nothing but the blood. Alright, so this is nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is Logic Pro X. This is what I what I record and edit in. Uh, just a second, hold on. Alright. I also just got a new modem, so I'm keep checking the stream health because it should be better now too. I just upgraded everything, so hopefully this works really well. Um, and I'm going to make my face smaller so you can see better. There we go. So collapse the drums because the drums are huge. All right, here's the, the file, the project. Uh, you can see the drums, like guitar, piano, acoustic, lead vocals, all that stuff. So mastering is what happens, if you don't know, after this is done. Uh, mastering is taking the final exported file, the exported song, um, and then editing that to bring it up to the right volume, maybe do some compression, some equalization. Um, what I'm doing here and what most people at home do is not really like pro mastering because to do pro mastering, you have to have like specialized rooms and multi-thousand dollar speaker setups of varying sorts and a degree in mastering and an excellent ear. So this is kind of just the homebrew mastering. This is just, you know, if you're recording your own stuff and you're not planning on sending it off to a professional master or like me, you can't afford to pay one thousands and thousands of dollars currently, um, you can master yourself. It's not going to be as perfect as the pro recordings you hear on the radio and whatnot, but you can get a pretty good result. So all I'm going to do here is, because I already mixed this, this is already recorded, this is already done, all I'm going to do here is export this file so you can see uh, where mastering starts. So the first thing in Logic Pro you need to do is you got this um, bar up here. I don't know what it's officially called. It's like the repeat bar. It tells the tells the program how long the song is and how long you want to export. So you just drag up top there. So I'm going to drag a couple bars past the end so I can get the audio tails going off. And then I want a bar or two in the beginning just so I don't miss 
anything at all at the beginning. And then you'll export it, which in Logic Pro you can go to File, Bounce, Project or Selection, or if you're a key command person, which is much easier, just Command B will bounce it. And bouncing is just exporting the song basically. The it bounce, the word bounce comes from like when they had to actually like move the audio tapes to another deck and like put it on other tapes and roll the tech, you know. I don't know. I've never done that, but that's where the word comes from. So we're going to bounce project or selection. So again, file, bounce, project, or selection. I don't need to do this because I've already done this song, but for mastering, you don't want compressed files. You do not want an MP3 because um, that has compression, and you don't want to master anything with compression. You want, you want a big file. Um, so PCM is what you want here, and then AIFF is usually what I go with. You can go with WAVE if you really want to. Um, but I just stick with AIFF. And then for mastering, you want, you probably want 24 bits. Um, when you actually use the song later, you'll probably use a 16-bit file because that's the standard that they use on CDs and a lot of services like streaming services and such. Um, but for mastering, go up to 24-bit, go down to 32-bit, because just like a picture, you can make the resolution go less but you can never make the resolution go more. You can't add resolution, but you can always take it away. So go bigger to start out with, especially with mastering. So 24-bit, uh, 44 is what I use. You can go up to 96 and then do it later, but honestly, I don't see any reason not to do 44 here because you're never gonna use, I shouldn't say never, most people are never gonna use anything other than 44. And you can change that. It's not great, but you can. Offline's fine, normalize fine, and then OK. And then you'll see, oh, I got to save it on the Bose Studio file. I'm just going to save it on the desktop because this is just an extra file. Then it'll go through and play through the whole song and uh, bounce it. Make a Basically, it's just making a single audio file that you're going to use later. Oh, I forgot one important thing. You can see down here, you can't see me pointing to that, but over here in your channel strip, my master channel setting is set to negative 5 dB. Um, yours doesn't have to be that DB, but what you need to do is pull up some sort of like, um, actually you don't need to pull up, you can just watch this, the decibel bar here, and it needs to peak below or around negative five, is where I like to set it, so you can see if I play, you can see down here, my bar jumping, and then this number right here is the maximum DBs that it has hit. So right now you can see 5.9 is as loud as it got. Here we got uh, 8. So play it for a while the loudest part to see what it gets. And I already set this, so I got this down to where it didn't get much past 5, like that. Which probably is that was I brought it down to 5, because if I brought this up to 0, it's going to be higher. So I, I brought this down to negative 5. EB, and then that made sure that this never peaked above five. And the reason, sorry, you're, that's probably really loud while I'm talking, sorry. <laughs> um, the reason you want to do that to get it to negative five is because when you master, you're going to bring the volume back up in, in a different way and you need headroom so you can play with it. Because if you're peaking, when that file goes into mastering, you've got nowhere to go. You can't do anything with it, basically. Again, like photography, it's like clipping the blacks and the whites. You can't do anything once that happens. So give yourself some headroom. All right, so we've exported this from Logic Pro. Sorry if this is too easy or too hard for you guys or whatever you're trying to do. I'm just going over how I master in Logic. And again, if you have any questions, don't know what I'm saying, or have a different way to do it, leave those in the chat on the side. And I'm also just testing if you just joined us, my new live stream setup to see how it goes. So. Thought you could just hang out with me while I do some mastering here. All right, so I'm gonna close that because we've exported that song already. Don't save because I already did that. All right, so now here you can see nothing but the blood AIFF. It's just a audio file like you could play in iTunes or whatever. And then I'm gonna open. You'll have to create, but I already have one. Just create a new blank Logic Pro project, and this is going to be your mastering project. Um, here's mine here. I'm going to open this one. I have, I have like five versions because I've been doing this for a long time. All right. 
So yours won't look like this. Yours will be blank and one of these, all these files in it. But what you're going to do then is just take your file from wherever you got it and just drag it straight into a new uh, track. New, whoops, oh, oh, my bad. I jumped, sorry. Yep, bring it into a new uh, track here. So you can see it exported into a new track. And I'm not sure why it got all small. What the heck's going on? What? What? What are you doing? Why are you stuck? There we go. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Okay. So here is your audio file. You can see here the waveform looks very small compared to these four. And what these four are are just radio, like songs off the radio. This is uh, Keep Your Head Up by, I forgot the guy. It's just a pop song. This is different by Acceptance. It's a punk rock song. This is Your Song by Elton John. This is Run Around by Blues Traveler. Kind of different genres I could look at. So you could do that too. Just drag in some songs that you think are mastered well, that you think sound really good. Um, and bring them in as new tracks and then you can use those as reference tracks like how loud should it be, how much bass should it have, treble, etc, etc. That's always a good idea. So I have those there. Um, but as I said, you can see the waveform on mine is much smaller than these. That's because it hasn't been mastered yet. And that's what we're going to do. So, how do you master? So the first thing you want to do is trim. So basically what we're going to do for mastering is we're going to trim it make it the right length, any fade outs and such that we need, and then we're gonna add equalization, compression, and limiting. And that's gonna take out some bad EQ, some bad um, frequencies with EQ, and then it's gonna bring the level up and compress it a little bit, and I'll show you that. Um, these are all the songs that I've already mastered here. So I have a preset that I will bring in. I created this preset for mastering. Uh, what's it called? Reawaken Studio Master 2, I think. Yeah, that seems right. Studio Master 2. OK. So now you can see it's added gain, a multipressor, which is a compressor, EQ, another compressor, limiter, another limiter, and a multimeter. <laughs> I'll explain all of that right now. That's a lot of things, but it's really only three things of different kinds. So first I'm going to trim it. So I need to play it. I'm going to make my, there we go, make that bigger so I can see it better. So let's play it. And I can't hear it, so I need headphones. Hold on. You know what, I'm not going to be able to hear it here either. All right, I won't be able to hear this because the audio is going into my live stream. I'll have to figure that out later. Oh, first problem, live stream test. There we go. I'm going to guess it starts here because I can see the waveform. I'm pretty sure it starts there. You should not guess, but I can't hear it currently. So I'm going to find the beginning there. I'm going to split it playhead like that. You see, I just right click, right click, and then split it playhead. Also, command T if you're a keyboard shortcut kind of person. And I'm going to delete this first part. And in general, you do not want much before the actual audio starts on a track because um, you don't want somebody to click like next or play and then there to be a big pause because they'll get confused, they'll think it's broken, they'll hit play again or go to the next song and it just gets it's just not good. So don't leave too much space at the beginning. Um, no more than a second at most, I'd say. I'd probably try to leave not much at all. So you can see if I start it where it was starting and play it, you can see how strange that would be. So if I if just pretend I'm hitting play on a, on a thing, on a radio, whatever you call it, a CD player, a computer, I can't talk today. So if I hit play, then I'm like, did it play? Is it starting? What's happening? Why isn't it playing yet? Oh, now it's playing. So yeah, you don't want that. So cut it down to, to right before the audio starts, unless you have a really good reason to do otherwise. And then I drag that back to the beginning. So now my beginning of the song is set. Then I need to set the end of the song. And 
typically you'll you'll use a fade for the end of a song. I mean, it might just cut out depending on the song, but often you'll use a fade. So to get your automation in Logic Pro, you click on this little button right here. It's got the little dots there. It looks like a connect the dots. Show hide automation. But click that, and it'll show these yellow lines. That is your volume automation. Can be other things too, like pan and such. But we're just doing volume. And then here, you can see there's no yellow line, no yellow line yet because I haven't automated anything. So again, I can't hear this because the audio is routed to my live stream. But I'm gonna guess here. So I can click, make a dot. I'm gonna click, make another dot. I'm gonna click, make another dot because I usually do two part fades. And then bring this, you just drag this dot down a little and then drag this dot down to nothing. And in general, I use a fade that kind of looks like this, kind of a slow and then big. Because once you get to a certain point here, people are kind of expecting, okay, now I don't need any more audio anymore, so you can fade a little faster. Um, there we go. Again, I can't hear it, so I hope this is right. Roughly like that. And then if you got that the way you want it, just drag your little play marker to wherever the end of the fade is right here and get rid of the end because you don't need it anymore. Delete that. And now you have the length of your song set in the fade. So now the file is just how you want it to be in the final audio file. So now I can get rid of automation because that's just a lot. And then now we can talk about what I'm doing over here. Um, again, if you have any questions while I'm doing this, let me know in the chat. I'll answer them for you. Um, I might be going too fast or saying things you don't know, or maybe you know all this. I don't know. So first thing I have is gain. I don't always use gain. <laughs> That's sounded like the Dosekis guy. I don't always use gain. Um, but I needed to for these files because they were a little quiet. So I bumped up the gain two to start just because I didn't want to compress as much as I usually do on these. And the first thing I have is a multi-presser uh, because my bass was a little out of control. So you can see here what a multi-presser does is it's a compressor that's divided into different parts of the audio spectrum and you can move around. So one, this one area here is bass and this is your low mids, your high mids, your highs. And it, can plot, it applies a compressor to just those frequencies. So my bass was a little out of control, so I just needed to compress my bass a little. So I brought this compressor here in the bass area down a bit. And then same, I little had some high mids that I needed to get rid of. So I did that. So that was the first thing I did, and that's just to kind of control what goes into all the compressors and stuff. Again, you don't have to use a multi-compressor. That's a little crazy. I don't usually use those either, but I just had a problem with the bass on that song. Um, next up, you have your linear EQ or your whatever EQ you use. Your EQ is usually pretty high up in the chain because um, you want to get rid of those problem frequencies before they go through the rest of the chain, like the compressor and the limiter and such. Um, all right, so you can see I didn't do much here with, the, with this EQ. Um, this was just my this is my stock that's in there. I did actually need to bring it down a bit, and I actually had some bass problems. So once I finished, it looked something more like this. Uh, I gotta make that wider. How do I make that wider? Oh, there it is. Yep. So I had to bring down a bass again because I had some bass issues on this song. And sometimes for mastering, I'll bump the mids, and then bring bring some of the real real highs down. Um, yep. So this, this, what you see here is pretty typical for when I master something EQ wise. Again, it depends completely on the song, but oftentimes for amateur recording artists like myself, I'm not a professional, um, the bass and the low mids is what tends to get out of control the most. Um, it, they just get muddy because you got a bass guitar and a bass drum and maybe the bottom of the piano and maybe like a Rhodes keyboard with some low notes and maybe the lowest notes of the acoustic guitar. All those can get muddy and low frequencies mess with each other and get muddy much easier 
and high frequencies. Like the things up in the high frequencies you can think of as like crisp and easily distinguished from each other. Like they're sharp, if that makes any sense. When you get down low, they get soft and muddy and they blend together into this like big blob of just noise. And so, yeah, usually the problems are in the low frequencies for amateur musicians or recording engineers such as myself. Um, so yeah, that's often what it looks like. And then this mid boost is kind of to bring up the vocals and the acoustic and the things that let's be honest, people listen to the most in a, in a recording. So that's what my cue typically looks like. The, the next things we have here is compressor limiter, compressor limiter. That's all it is. Compressor limiter, compressor limiter. Usually I don't have this compressor and I have this compressor instead. So to simplify what you see here, it's usually EQ, compressor limiter, compressor limiter. That's it. Um, you don't have to double compress and double limit. I just do because I read it somewhere and I tried it and I really liked it. You might not, but to me it feels like a more gradual way to compress and limit. Like do it a little bit and then do it a little bit more and it's a little not so harsh I guess I don't know if there's any science to that but it's what I use so after the EQ I got my compressor and if I play this um, boy this might be really loud hold on let me bring down the volume hopefully this isn't too loud prepare yourselves for if you're wearing headphones maybe take them off for a second okay here we go oh that was it I think that's okay. I'm turn down a bit more. Okay, so you can see here, this compressor, this little needle right here, is barely jumping at all. Um, so it's just compressing just a little bit, and I've had I've got some gain that I'm making up on this as well. Um, but again, this first compressor is bringing the volume up, but it's not doing a whole lot of actual compression all right then this first limiter you can see it's bringing it up as well but not doing as much second compressor right now is not on but if it was you could see this one's compressing a lot more you can see the needle jumping more. So that one's doing a bit more compression. I'm gonna turn that off right now. And finally, I have my final limiter. And your final limiter um, should be your final output volume. So you ne you never want you never want your track to peak in the end. Once you export it, you don't want it to peak because that'll distort. So this final one, this final limiter, basically takes the audio and says, "Okay, audio, you cannot go above this." amount. Mine right here is negative seven decibels. You could go negative three just as long. I wouldn't go to zero. Negative one's fine, but I usually go a little lower for safety. So that's just limiting it. It's making sure it's not going to peak. And you can see here, this is what it's limiting. You can see it's not doing a lot, but occasionally this bar will pop up. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio. I'm going to turn it up a bit. I'm going to play the audio and then I'm going to turn off some of these so you can hear what they're doing. All right. Here we go. Hopefully you can hear that. All right, now I'm going to turn off the gain. On, off, on. Now I'm gonna do the multipressor. I don't think you hear a lot with this. Just controlling the bass. Nothing but the blood on. Here's the EQ. Off. On. Off. And again, you can see each of these are just doing a little, but it's gradually getting it better. First compressor off, first compressor on, first compressor off, first compressor off, second compressor off, second compressor off. Alright, 
So there you can see these are all doing slightly, just a little bit to correct some bad things and then bring the volume up and compress the file a bit. And this multimeter at the end is just, it's just a meter. It's just to check things. It doesn't do anything to the audio. It's just so I can see what it looks like. So there's the multimeter. Turn the audio down so you can hear me. Yeah. So this way I can check all my frequencies. And, you know, so if I look at this and I see a giant gap here, I know something went wrong somewhere. If there's very little high end and way too much this, I know there's something wrong. So that's just that's just so you can check it. All right. So again, you can play with all these things. Just you know, do whatever. What sounds good, but that's how I master. Um, and. That's about it. And then once you're done with that and you've got this how you want, it sounds good and you've checked it against these files you brought in or checked it against other files, um, then you're done. Oh, so there's something. So this, the reason I have one file for all of the songs, so these are all of the songs on the album and then my reference songs, is that this way I can check the songs against each other to make sure they all sound cohesive. Because that's a huge part of mastering is making sure the whole album sounds cohesive and it's all the same volume and you, you don't want people changing volume in between songs and all the EQ is kind of similar and the lyrics or video uh, lyrics and videos the words the vocals is the word I'm looking for man I need more coffee hold on coffee break the vocals are all similar levels so that's why I do them all in the same um, file oh my gosh I can't talk so I can see that they all sound similar again this is probably not how a professional master would do but I'm not a professional master so once you're done with that you export it the exact same way you did the first file you just set your bar up here to the right length um, command B brings up bounce and then same thing 24-bit AIFF or whatever one you you want to use I also bring a mp3 out for this too because it's going to give me an mp3 as well and an AIFF, so I might as well have both just in case I need an mp3. Or you can just convert it later. And then OK, and then and it will export the song. Make sure only that song is unmuted. You can see all the others are muted and grayed out there. If you have more than one song unmuted, then it'll export both and it'll sound really bad. It would, it would sound something like this. Yeah, that's not what you want. So make sure it's only the only one not muted. Um, and then you're done mastering. I think that's it. Um, it's not actually that simple because I, as you saw before, I have like eight mastering files because I master and then I listen on some speakers and then I don't like what I did and I remaster and I'm listening on speakers and I don't like what I did. And it's just, it's a lot. Um, mastering's kind of driving me crazy here. Uh, but I think I finished. I think I'm finished with the Reawaken Hymns studio album, and I'm so very, very happy about that. Um, if you're mastering, if you have not mastered before, and you're super picky like myself, uh, it can take a while because what you're going to have to do, and even if you're not super picky, you should do this anyway, um, you need to, after you've mastered, you need to listen to it on different kinds of speakers. Because one of the reasons you're mastering is so that it's not drastically different on different types of speakers. It still will be because speakers are crazy different. But So for instance, when I'm mastering and why it takes so long is first I listen on my computer monitors. Then I listen on a nice audio system I have in my basement. Then I listen on one pair of headphones. Then I listen on another pair of headphones. Then I listen on some earbuds. Then I listen on a small Bluetooth speaker like a Google Play or something. Then I listen on my MacBook speakers because some people listen on that. Then I listen on cell phone speakers because some people will listen with that. It's a lot because people listen to so many different types of speakers these days and they're all so very different. Um, so that's why it can take a long time. But it's worth it in the end because you can, those different kind of speakers will show you different flaws or different strengths or whatever and then you can adjust um, for those. And I think that's all I have about mastering in Logic Pro X. Uh, hope if you needed this, you enjoyed it. Um, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I might make some short and sweet, kind of more produced, not live stream videos about this kind of thing. 
Um, today I just wanted to test my new live stream setup and I figured, hey, I'm mastering stuff. I'll show you how I do mastering in Logic Pro and that's how I do it. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Reawaken Him studio album, as you can see, is going to be out soon. I'm so excited. I've been working very hard on it. Um, I finished mastering today. I literally finished mastering today. I'm so very, very happy. Oh, that's I, that's not all. I do have something else. That's right. I was going to show you Ozone. Oh, I totally forgot. Okay. I'm going to show you this real quick. So this, how I showed you, it's how I normally master. Um, there's a program called Ozone. It's like a plugin. I'm going to open it here. And it is incredibly good for mastering. It's basically a mastering plugin. And I really, really like it. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be using it because it's $500. See, I, I was trying it today. I've got one day left. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I can't justify paying $500 for this. There are smaller versions. And I'm, I'll have to look into what the... There's a $150 version. I'm not sure what it does different. I'll have to look into it. But this here is the trial of the expensive one, the $500 version, which I did not realize how much it was when I tried it. But basically, what happens here is you open this, and in this single window, you have all of your kind of mastering tools, like the maximizer, which is a limiter, dynamics, which is a cool, which is a compressor, but more basically. You got your equalizer; it's got dynamic equalizers, um, and they all sound really good. But what I really like is let me turn all these off so I can show you. Okay. So you can play the song and it will like tell you what it thinks you should do for mastering. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let me turn the song volume and you can see what it does. So master assistant and I don't know what's, I don't really know about streaming. I've been using this CD medium. You can also upload a track you want it to match, which is really cool. Hasn't worked well in my, in my um, experience so far. But it's cool. And so we'll do CD. So basically this is saying I'm going to be mastering it for a CD, which is kind of just regular audio. And then I'll hit next. And then you play the song, and then it'll it'll analyze it. So next, waiting to play audio. Let me play the audio. All right, so you can see it's setting equalizer. It's setting a compressor. It's analyzing dynamics. It's setting a limiter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you go, you'll hear the audio jump up and down as it does this and analyzes it. It takes a little bit, but oh, it's really cool, and I really, really like it. All right, almost done. Except bring all these things in and basically master it. And it sounds really good. I don't know if it's sounding good right now because again I can't hear it, but it might be, I don't know, it looks like a fresh one. Really so yeah, Ozone is really, really good and if you don't want to mess with all this stuff and you just want a good, easy way to master that sounds really good and you don't mind spending some money on that, I would recommend Ozone. It's really good. I really, really like it, but it is $500. Which is double the cost of Logic Pro itself. So that's the other way to do it. Ozone, again, really like it. Um, and if you can afford it and you'd like to, go for it. It's awesome. Um, all right, so that is all I have. I forgot I was going to do that. Uh, that's all I have about mastering. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for helping me test out my new live stream setup. Um, seemed like it worked pretty well. My old computer couldn't have done this in any fashion. So that's cool. Again, and the Reawaken Studio album. Just finished mastering today. Woo! I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so happy. So that will be coming out soon. I'm going to set a release date for it next week. So watch for that on this channel and Reawaken M's. More so Reawaken M's because that's what it is. But All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Good test. Good mastering. Thanks, guys. I don't know how to stop this live stream. I think it's this button. Yeah, it's this button. See ya.